Moore, announces he is officially overturning. Liberals do not like President Trump so of course, they won't like his administration either. They criticize almost every single member of that administration but for some unknown reason, they criticize Ben Carson the most. When it comes to this man they often say how he is unqualified for his job without realizing that this man is proving otherwise. He is indeed qualified and does the job very well. This country's best brain surgeon is best in his government-given job. Only a few months ago he was the one who helped uncover $500 billion worth of clerical errors in the HUD budget. Should I say that these errors were ignored by the Obama administration or you already know? This week the man stroked again according to Young Cons. His department is trying to reverse the Obama administration's policy and return to a competitive bidding process to award Section 8 housing, according to a well-placed source in the department. This move will twist around the Obama-era-style methodology of using a grand-style process that was rebuked by administrators and ultimately the U.S. Supreme Court. One Department of Housing and Urban Development official said that every single step that is necessary to change this back is taken but refused to comment or to give any further information about the case due of fear of tainting the bidding process. At this point basically, everything that came out of Obama, even the Grant style was a total disaster. Dr. Carlson is doing an amazing job and is doing the changes we all need. President Trump made no mistake by giving him this position. Another win for the conservatives and another step for making America great again. Breaking news from North Korea, prepare for another goddamn war. We all, and that means you liberals, need to pray for President Trump. We have to put aside our Trump bashing. You liberals don't have to stop Trump bashing but you will need to be more selective, like only bash him with facts not made up junk. Because the world is a very dangerous place and if you think it is never more than five minutes from tearing itself apart you simply have not been paying attention. Advertisement The spark is what's needed and that is what Obama must have missed in history class because his inaction in Syria was the spark that destabilized the world and Trump is facing one tough decision and the consequences are enormous and he may spark a conflict no matter which way he goes. This is serious folks and is Trump first true foreign policy test. Advertisement According to a Washington Post report on a confidential U.S. intelligence assessment Pyongyang has developed a nuclear warhead capable of fitting inside its missiles. In other words we have reached the end of the line. North Korea has almost reached its goal of becoming a nuclear power, thanks Barack Obama. What in the hell were you doing for eight years while this threat built up to the point of no return? If this turns into another goddamn war it is on you buddy, not Trump. Because Trump will not allow North Korea to have a nuke bomb that can reach the US mainland. Nor should he and nor would any Democrat, believe me when I say that. They can have them in North Korea and while that is a problem we could deal with it, but having first strike capability against the US mainland ain't gonna happen. Or against Russia or China, this is not just an American problem. According to CNN, the IC, intelligence community, assesses North Korea has produced nuclear weapons for ballistic missile delivery, to include delivery by ICBM class missiles, the assessment states in an excerpt read to the Washington Post. CNN said that they have not independently verified this report from the Post but all signs are pointing to its accuracy. The report says that it is not known if North Korea has successfully tested this new smaller nuke design but we know their recent missile test showed they can hit Denver Louisiana, Seattle, if not Chicago. It should be noted that the analysis is from the Defense Intelligence Agency and it is unclear if it is shared across the intelligence community. But it is terrifying if true. Busted Tucker Carlson exposes huge fraud in secret Obama program. At this point, we can all say that nothing positive happened during the Obama administration. 
Obama together with his administration ruled for eight years and basically left this country in ruins. All that thanks to the massive frauds and corruptions. Even after leaving, Obama did nothing but living and enjoying his life at the cost of U.S. taxpayers. Recently Tucker Carlson, from Fox News revealed another fraud that comes straight from the previous administration and this time it is proved how Obama has actually been spending much of the hard-earned taxpayer dollars reports cons nation. Tucker's words were, investigators say that getting bogus applications approved is ludicrously easy, and as many as 36% of all beneficiaries from the program should have been rejected. He basically explained what happened in one program the Obama administration initiated. Basically, they were doing only something that they pleased and were unwilling to solve their own issues. The original program started way back in 1985 in order to aid the destitute families to be able to buy a family phone, if I remember quite right, it was called Lifeline. Obama used this program and made things worse. He took advantage of the program and enabled multiple phones for free. In the end, this costs the U.S. taxpayers millions in fraudulent charges. Before leaving office, the previous president extended the program once again to cover broadband Internet service. Now, taxpayers are forced to give phones, phone service, and Internet service to low-income Americans. Also, it is revealed now by the GAO that nearly two-thirds of all Obama phone recipients receive their free government-issued phone service by falsifying their applications. This is something that we all expected. We should expect more cases like this one from the former administration in charge because after all, they were only good in doing frauds and corruptions. Trump give billions back to American taxpayers that Obama wasted, here's where he found it. Over the years many presidents promised many things. Sadly, only a few of those things happened. Fortunately, this is not the case with our current president. Donald Trump is a man of word and so far everything he promised during his campaign is becoming reality. One of the most often issues that others promised to do was how they're going to lower taxes and decrease spending or cut some program that eats a good chunk of the government budget. They never did it though after entering the White House. Let's get back to Trump. He is in charge for almost eight months and in these past months he did, in fact, more than any other president ever. Trump is a hard-working man and so far is doing anything possible to improve the standard of the Americans, who worked hard and who were never recognized by the previous president. Trump, in fact, appreciates every single American and he promised the same thing the previous ones promised but this time he is actually doing the change and is cutting away the bloated and unproductive system that allows the able-bodied to mooch off of the taxpayers. The latest U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA, statistics on food stamp enrollment now show that since President Trump took office in January 2017, more than 1.1 million Americans don't have to take welfare in the form of food stamps anymore reports Freedom Daily. According to the newest data that came in, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program SNAP, dropped to 41,496,255 in May 2017, from the USDA. This number is down from 42,691,363 in January 2017 when Trump took office. In the first months, while being president, he actually made SNAP enrollment decreased by 2.79%. Food stamp participation in 2017 has fallen to its lowest level since 2010. According to some, this is continuing in a big way. So, in short words, the current administration is repairing every single mistake and damage done to the welfare system by the previous administration. Trump, in fact, proposed to cut SNAP in his 2018 budget and informed us that he is going to expand all the work requirements for able-bodied adults receiving food stamps. Also, his cut on illegal immigration cancelled their food stamps because they will be deported and they do not deserve a place in here. When it comes to Obama, 
his numbers are totally different than Trump's. For example, during his presidency, the number of food stamp recipients was reached by 10.7 million people, with additional 32% increase since he took office. Nearly 33,490,000 people received food stamp benefits when Obama began and during the eight years that number increased to 44,219,123, which showed an increase of about 10,729,000 people. Freedom Daily also reported that federal lawmakers are also working on legislation that would seek to expand food stamp work requirements and put time limits on how long those enrolled in the food stamp program can receive benefits. Democrats lie but numbers do not lie. From now on, the tax dollars are going to be given to those who really are willing to work and not to those who are unwilling. Over a million U.S. residents taken off of welfare is a great way of improving this country so far. What Franklin Graham just said about Caitlyn Jenner already has 500k likes. It is sad how some people in this country are willing to do anything for fame and money. They lose their morals down in order to receive the spotlight and to represent some kind of improper icon for even more improper movement. Will we ever get our country back? I think yes, there is a possibility of this because many people slowly are opening their eyes. A few weeks ago people lost their minds after Trump took to Twitter to announce his decision about banning transgendered people from the military. Moments later many people blamed him and one of them is Caitlyn Jenner formerly known as Bruce Jenner. She and everyone else who bash on Trump do not understand the point of being a military person and what in fact that role represents. She can do whatever she wants with her body but she should not put her nose on topics like these. Remember that even she got an ESPY award? Well yes, she did and Franklin Graham connected many dots and shared his opinion on Facebook regarding this matter reports Clash Daily. He wrote, Caitlyn Jenner is being honored with the ESP and SP award for courage? I find this hard to swallow after spending time with wounded military veterans and their spouses with Operation Heal Our Patriots, they are true heroes and their lives define courage. Some have had 30 or 40 surgeries, not to change their gender, but to try to put their bodies back together after defending our country and to recognize the very confused Caitlyn Jenner as a hero before the entire world? Give me a break. If you want an example of real courage, it's when Jesus Christ willingly allowed himself to become your sin and died in your place on the cross, the righteous one for the unrighteous. What an extraordinary comment by Reverend Graham.